Hello and welcome to the Inter uh, the R3S stage on the internet. Let's speak a bit about the talk that we're going to watch. Um, it's about unwinnable prices on the internet. And uh, you have seen it um, on different websites where you can spin something and you can win something very interesting like magnetic monopoles or something like that. And um, our, uh, and um, um, and we will learn if that's possible, if you can win something and if, and if you can win something, how you can do that. Uh, with that, Passing over to Robert. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, my name is Roland Meertens. Uh, I, uh, you can ask me any questions on my email. Uh, and yeah, my uh, talk will be about uh, unwinnable, unwinnable prizes on the internet. So sometimes you find uh, websites who indeed promise you prizes and uh, you can't win them. Uh, that's uh, maybe uh, already um, a bit of a spoiler. Um, but the way in which you cannot win them was a bit surprising to me, so, and I think it makes a funny story, so hence this talk. Uh, so I want to go over how, in what way, you cannot win these prizes. I'm going to go a bit over how you can discover this, how I discovered it, and how you can discover this for yourself. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to talk a bit about what can you do when you discover such a website? What can you do about it or against it? So yeah, first maybe uh, how it started. At some point I was uh, having a call with a friend and she clicked uh, on some Facebook link uh, to a website where you could buy uh, edible cookie dough, which you don't even have to bake, you just eat it directly. And when you came to this website, it, uh, basically there was some pop-up which said, uh, said click here to win a prize. And when you clicked it, it said uh, spin the wheel, leave your email and you can, can win uh, one free kilo of cookie dough. Yeah, amazing, right? Who doesn't want to win this? Um, and not only could you win this free kilo of cookie dough, I took a screenshot of the spinner you saw there, and uh, that's, uh, that's on the slide. You could also uh, make your own taste of cookie dough in their kitchen. Amazing, I love cooking. I would love to make this uh, my own taste in their kitchen. You could win a discount of 50%. That's quite a lot of uh, discount. Uh, you could win a kilo of cake batter. That sounds like a great price. You could also win 5% of a discount, uh, which you can also see there. But after you spun it, uh, after you spin the spinner, or after I left my email, uh, or let's first start with after my friend left uh, her email, um, they said no luck. So she didn't win anything. Uh, so that was, uh, that was uh, bad, especially since there are one, two, three, four, five, there's like 10, 10 places the spinner can up in. Apparently there was one which said no luck. Uh, then uh, I entered my email, and again the spinner spun, and it ended at the same square. No luck. Well, that's, uh, that could be unlucky, of course. But then I started wondering, what is actually the probability of winning a prize here? Um, or maybe to put it more clearly, I think the question is, what does this website pay you in return for them giving uh, you uh, your email address? Because normally I would have never left it. Uh, so first I attempted to look at my network traffic. So I thought probably when I submit my email address to this website, they send it to some server who then of course registers it and adds it to some database where they, uh, from which they spam me their uh, new uh, flavors or something. Um, so I started Postman, started monitoring my traffic, and at first I was a bit uh, surprised because the server didn't reply with that I won or didn't win which basically means that all the logic is actually in the browser. Um, so I think everybody knows that if you want to see what a website is doing, you can look at their uh, JavaScript and at their HTML code. Uh, so of course I uh, opened the inspect source, source uh, page in Chrome. Um, and one thing which I noticed a lot of people don't know is that you can also edit code. If you uh, right click on a file in Chrome, you can save it for overrides. And the logic for the spinner was indeed in the browser. Everything was handled for what you can win and what your probabilities are was indeed handled in my browser. 
So of course, that's fun. Uh, that means you can modify j their JavaScript. So I found this function in it, which had a load JSON thing. Um, and there I added some code, which you can see on screen. It's not really interesting. But what I basically did is I took all of their prizes you can win in the spinner. And I logged the probability. And uh, so that's how I could find the true probability of this website. In this case, uh, there was uh, a 95% probability of not winning a prize. Um, I thought that was bigger than, uh, than the spinner showed me. Um, there was a 5% chance of a 5% discount. Uh, yeah, it's not such a high discount, but there was, you could at least win it. There was a 10% chance of a 10% or sorry, a 1% chance of a 10% discount. But everything else, like the free kilo of cookie dough, the 50% discount, the free cake batter, um, making your own taste in their kitchen, of course, uh, there was a 0% chance of winning it. So yeah, I thought that was a, that was a bit lame. Um, so yeah, the conclusion uh, of the first part of the talk is, of course, you can't win any of these interesting uh, prizes on this website. Um, but yeah. That's not the end, because we couldn't modify the JavaScript, right? So first of all, uh, I thought that only 5% chance of winning uh, this 5% uh, disc uh, discount was a bit low. So you can, of course, change that. And that way, I could always win, uh, win this 5% uh, discount. So cool. But then uh, I thought, oh, well, that means, of course, I can also win this best price, this free kilo of cookie dough, right? Uh, it said, uh, by default, it said dot win is false, but I can change it to true. I can set the probability to a lot. And the result was an error. So it looks like uh, this website didn't even code the logic for winning these interesting prizes. So that's, uh, that's not very nice. Um, so yeah. Of course, now I concluded this for one website, but I was wondering, uh, do more websites use this practice? So it turns out this particular website was using uh, Shopify, uh, and in Shopify, you can have a lot of plugins. So in this case, this website decided to install the Spin a Sale plugin. And if you go to this um, plugin, uh, Shopify, you see that it's very popular. It uh, got uh, a lot of positive reviews, and uh, a lot of people gave it five stars because it really increases the amount of people that sign up on websites to get their spam. Um, and if you look at the reviews, there's also a lot of written reviews, and then sometimes owners left their email uh, or their um, uh, website domain. So I found way more of these uh, places where you could win interesting things uh, from barbecues to rodeo equipment to I don't know what. Uh, but a lot of these websites were basically promising big prizes which you couldn't really win. Um, so yeah, there's one, uh, by the way, there's maybe one website which I did really like. Uh, there was this website which uh, also made some prizes unwinnable, but they basically uh, set the probability for winning nothing to zero, and they always made sure that you won a reasonable amount of, uh, of a discount. So I thought that's, uh, that's also uh, fun. But yeah, the amount, so the probabilities you see here uh, don't really correspond to the actual probabilities you have in the app. Um, so that maybe brings me to the, to the last question. Is this ethical or legal, and what can we do about it? So uh, if you go back, so I had many discussions with friends about what did you think about this uh, when I discovered this. I think that most people were kind of amazed that when they see something like this, they didn't really expect that the, the probabilities you see on this spinner are exactly the probabilities you get. So. I think that most people didn't expect you to have a 10% chance of winning a lot of cookie dough. But I think that people didn't expect the actual spinner to look like this on the screen. So I think that most people expected you to have a, a, a bit of a fairer chance to win anything. Um, so yeah, I give my email in return for a fair chance to win specific prizes. That's the reason I sign up. But the shop owners, of course, don't keep up their end of the deal. And uh, they only give me a very small chance of a discount and a very big chance of having no price. Um, so yeah, I think that uh, at least uh, the conversation I had with my friends, a lot of people are not surprised that the probabilities are not correct. But people are surprised that they are so incorrect and you cannot win those prizes. Um, so what I did is I emailed the owners of the website. So 
I'm uh, going to paraphrase it and not show the actual emails, but I said, hey, I can't really win any of these big prizes. Uh, I figured it out. And uh, the first reply I got was, uh, oh, let me ask a website builder. I'm uh, mostly making tasty things. <laughs> uh, the he he was actually, actually, in the, actually in the email, uh, so that's why I'm uh, adding it here. But that made me a bit sour. I thought, yeah, I mean, you're obviously not uh, keeping your end of the deal when I sign up with my email. So I asked them two more times to change it, and later they said, oh, we changed it. And I looked at their website again, and they didn't really change it. Um, later, they did change it a bit. Uh, but they kept some uh, interesting prizes, like uh, making your own taste in their kitchen. So they, as you can see here, they did replace a lot of things with just, oh, you get a discount. Uh, I think they gave you a way bigger chance to win this 3% discount. So at least people always got something. Um, but they still included some prizes, which are, uh, which are not uh, actually winnable. Um, but yeah, that maybe brings me to the to the part of uh, is there a law against uh, against lying on the internet? Uh, <laughs> you would of course say uh, probably not, but uh, I discovered that there's this uh, authority for consumers and markets. Uh, this was a Dutch website, by the way, so I'm only quoting the Dutch authority of uh, consumers and markets, the Autoriteit Consumentenmarkt in the Netherlands. And I uh, actually actually reached out to them, and they seem to be quite uh, quite happy with uh, messages I send them. So to again paraphrase them, uh, they said uh, in Dutch, but I'll translate it. Uh, in case a seller has an action in which some prizes can't be won, uh, this apparently can be seen as an unfair commercial practice. And uh, apparently, the authority of consumers and markets in the Netherlands does try to monitor compliance with this legislation. Uh, I also asked them what I can do about it. So if I go to them and I say, hey, these, these websites are uh, having this unfair commercial practice, uh, what can you do about it? And they said, oh yeah, please, uh, please reach out to us. Um, and besides contacting the firm and asking for a commitment, they can apparently give companies a fine if they refuse to change their way of working. Uh, so that's, uh, that's at least one thing you can do if you find practices like this on the internet. Um, yeah, and as I said, uh, when I talked to them, they seemed to be quite eager to actually do something about it, which I was amazed by. Uh, I didn't really expect anyone to care about this, except for me, who found it a really funny story. Um, so yeah, the conclusions are basically, uh, no, you cannot win any of these interesting prizes uh, on uh, these and other websites I checked. Um, we also learned that you can save your JavaScript locally, uh, so you can discover this. Um, we discovered that you can find a lot of websites which use this plugin, and uh, if you ever find unfair commercial practices, uh, like unwinnable prizes on the internet, you can report such sites at the Autoriteit Consument and Markt uh, <laughs> in the Netherlands. Um, so yeah, that's it uh, for my talk. If you want to reach out to me, I don't know how smart it is to, at the end of this talk, give my real email, uh, but you can email me at rolandmeertens at gmo.com. Uh, my GitHub is uh, ermeertens, and I think I'm mostly active on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter, so uh, add me there and follow me there. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm kind of suspecting that someone like walks on stage now. Uh, cool. Uh, so, sorry, uh, this one caught me off guard. Um, I was expecting it for to, la to last tick a bit longer. Um, let me see if there are any questions so far. Um, none so none so far, but. Hopefully, so people remember you can put them in the Twitter, in the Twitters, in the in the mastodons of this world, and also uh, on the um, um, uh, in the uh, uh, in the IRC in the uh, in Hacken in channels R3s uh, or RC3. So um, uh, I, I do have one question: um, Did you in this whole endeavor stumble upon a? website that did things fairly like do you have i mean honestly i was kind of expecting that it is a scam that this is this my expectation i, I was surprised that you could actually win anything um <laughs> and uh the thing is um are there legitimate websites who do that who implement this spinning wheel fairly yeah so as i said i think that i 
I also didn't expect the wheel to have the exact probabilities which are there, but already mm -hmm. there, I think, when I talk about this with friends, a lot of them say, oh, I, 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 they were already amazed that these probabilities are not the same. Um, I think you have to kind of see it as if I would stand on the streets with, uh, with the actual wheel, Mm -hmm. And I would say, hey, do you want to win a kilo of cookie dough? And mm -hmm. you, you don't see this on the wheel. You would, of course, never leave your email. Uh, yeah. That would be weird. Um, what, I, uh, what I did like is this one website of which I gave an example, which uh, set the probability of no price to zero mm -hmm. and made sure that you always won uh, or the biggest chance you had there was uh, winning a 20% discount on their rodeo equipment, okay, I thought yeah. it was. And they also had a small chance of winning 25%, with, uh, mm -hmm. but then you had to order for at least $300 or something. Okay. So I think that's fair. But yeah. a lot of the... So the discounts seem to be quite like given generally generously mm -hmm. uh, because i think that encourages to to um, buy more. more yeah yeah but the the things like free free stuff um mm -hmm. that that just seems to be not winnable um okay oh sadly i put i put my phone away for a second and there are like 500 questions not 500 but three so um what tooling would you recommend to reverse engineer clients on JavaScript, especially if it's minified or obfuscated? Oh, yeah. If you have something which is minified or obfuscated, that will take you a long time. Uh, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. I actually think that there's one uh, other spinner uh, for Shopify uh, mm -hmm. which does obfuscate their, uh, their code. So, of course, I started looking into this more when I was preparing this talk. There was this other spinner which obfuscates it, and I didn't even get started there. Uh, I think what's at least relatively easy is doing this postman thing, so mm -hmm. inspecting what goes to the server and comes back. Mm -hmm. So in these packages, the the data is normally quite quite okay, mm -hmm. but indeed, as soon as it enters your browser and it gets parsed by something obfuscated, you you don't stand a chance, or at least if you don't have a big thing to gain, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't take any of this effort anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I know there are deobfuscators, but I'm not sure how well they work. But yeah, I think that yeah, again, if you if you really start looking into it, uh, normally if you have something like a deobfuscator, it's the thing I normally look for is um, function names, which make sense. Like mm -hmm. in this case, I was quite lucky that there was this function called in it, which has a had a parse JSON uh, part. So then it's easy to figure out immediately, okay, here is where the data comes in and I can start to inspect this. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you don't know what any of the functions do, it's uh, harder. One, one other maybe tip which I sometimes use is uh, changing functions and see what goes wrong on the page. Mm -hmm. So if you have a function, you can maybe just remove the code and, or remove this function and see where it crashes or where it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. That can also say something about what did I just break? What did I... It's a bit of a <laughs> trying to figure things out by breaking parts and seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. But that's, uh, that's at least something which, which sometimes can help you. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's uh, yeah. So basically, approach JavaScript like you would any other, any other decompiled binary thingy. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically one big puzzle. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if you if you are bored during lockdown, there you go. Um, so um, there. Oh, they're they're growing the questions. That's nice. Um, was it possible? Uh, to modify a website in a way to pretend to have won the big prize. Yeah. So what I did is uh, so what I did in terms of so I didn't even have to pretend because mm -hmm. I could just change the probabilities. Mm -hmm. So um, the spinner would always come at the place I would want it to come. Mm -hmm. And this is this is my, this was my point about uh, this gave an error. Uh, just the spinner would stop, mm -hmm. and nothing would happen. So the logic for handling these events was simply not coded. Yeah. Um, so there was no there was no kind of uh, interaction programmed for these kind of cases. Yeah, yeah the um, question. I, I think what they, what they are going for. Please correct me if I'm wrong on the internet. Um, I'm never wrong on the internet. People um, shouldn't lie on the internet. At uh, least, yeah. uh, that's for sure. Uh, no, um, they, um, if if it would be possible to not not get the error code and pretend, yeah, you won like the the one kilogram of uh, free cookie dough. I presume, yes, it would be possible to, to design something that looks like the official thing or... or, or yeah. Or, yeah. 
I mean, one, one thing I was considering uh, when I sent him an email, I was basically considering two things. One is just be direct and say, hey, Luke, you're, you're mm -hmm. uh, doing this unfair thing. Or I was also considering maybe I can just send him an email and say, hey, Luke, uh, the spinner ended at, uh, at a big price. Uh, but nothing happened. Can I still get it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, try to use some social engineering to mm -hmm. try to get this price anyways uh, <laughs> and see how they would respond if they would just directly tell me with, oh, you can't win this, there's something wrong. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, um, what about those websites claiming you are the one uh, millionth visitor, you won a fruity phone? How, l uh, how uh, does the code look there? Oh, I haven't looked at those, but I, I don't assume there's any logic encoded there. Uh, so the, the reason I found this interesting is that uh, the things which would give you something would actually still give you something. So I could order my cookie dough with 10% discount if I wanted to eat cookie dough. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think the, the you are the one millionth uh, winner, just, uh, just sent your email directly to a Nigerian prince and nothing else happens. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think there's any any logic uh, behind that. Uh, but but then you can win an inheritance of ten million uh, pounds, right? I mean, he uh, he told me it will be there any day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, the, the the last question, which is my favorite so far, uh, whoever submitted the question, you you won the internet. What would you do if you would win a huge amount of cookie dough? On the internet. Oh man, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I I would distribute it to all my friends. I uh, it would actually be quite cool to uh, to come here next year and uh, give another talk and then bring a lot of cookie dough. So if the owners of this website are watching uh, <laughs> and uh, want to sponsor this event, uh, I'm open. Uh, contact me. You ha you already have my email because I'm the weird person who uh, who uh, sent you an email. So um, also they they, they could have. Uh, they, they could have been fair and submitted some cookie uh, and sent you some cookie dough for the back, pound, back bounty program or something like that. Yeah. And I, I have to correct you on that part. I hope next year we will be back in Leipzig, but let's see where, that's, where that, that goes. Yeah. For anyway, the for the uh, for yeah. the bounty for the back bounty thing, uh, I, I I'm still kind of wondering. Like I'm still kind of thinking that. They, they of course knew this, right? They of course knew they, that they set these probabilities zero. Uh, so yeah, I'm also still kind of, if people still want to have a discussion online, it's still interesting to ask yourself, what would you have done? So if you have access to a plugin like this, uh, would you uh, would you submit, would you add unminimal prices or not? Uh, that's maybe a bit of an ethical question for yourself to think about. Uh, no. And um, yeah, nonetheless, thank you very much for, uh, for the talk. Um, it was very interesting. And um, I'm sure you will be around this RC3 world, or? Uh... Yeah, I'm now going to drive home, but I can maybe quickly check if there's people who want to have a Jitsi call or something, or yeah. want to uh, discuss something. I can quickly take a look at what kind of uh, messages there are. I mean, uh, they can sure drop you an email or something like that. And yeah. yeah, again, uh, you can... Uh, you can reach me at uh, my email. Uh, it's on screen again. I don't know how smart it is. Uh, please, uh, please don't spam. Uh, <laughs> I, I think um, that's too late. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you very much, and uh, have a safe trip home.